So this is a frequency table that shows the electricity bills of apartment unit for a certain month. So you're given the table over here. They ask you to construct or jive. So to construct or jive, we will need the upper boundary and the cumulative frequency. So everything, I copy down the one that is in black over here. So the one that you need to add on is the one in red. Huh? This one also in red, huh? I, I forgot to change to red. So you have to add a class before to construct or jive so that it doesn't floating. The graph doesn't floating like this. You have to add a class before over here. Okay. So after you add up everything, this is the value. The upper boundary start from 39.5. Cumulative frequency is 0, 4, 13, 24, 39, 52. I think you won't have any problem in solving this. So after that, you plot the ogive. This is the plotting of the ogive. Okay, the maximum value is 52 up here. Now, we have to answer the question here. They ask you to calculate the range and the interquartile range. So we know the range is the difference of the highest class and also the lowest class. So the difference will be 110 plus 129, and then you divide by 2. You minus 10 plus 29, and then you divide by 2. So this is the working. Then you will get the range is equal to 80. Okay, after that, to get the interquartile range, we need the first quartile and the third quartile. So first, you get the position of the first quartile. The first quartile will be 1 over 4 times the total frequency, 52. The answer is 13. So you refer to your graph, the 13 right now here. The value is 69.5. Same with the third quartile, 3 over 4 times 52, you will get 39. So 39 is here. So you will get the value exactly as 109.5. Therefore, the difference, the interquartile range, you just need to minus. The answer is 40. Okay? Then, you refer to the question, huh? they ask you to explain the meaning of the range and interquartile range. So, you just refer to the answer. Huh? What does it mean by range? Range means the difference between the highest electricity, because this one is about electricity. The highest electricity bill and the lowest one is 80 ringgit. Okay, there is the explanation. Eh? You can refer to this one or at the back of the book. Eh? Uh, Madam, yeah. I have a question. Okay. Um, for the lower class is uh, 10 plus 29 over 2. Yeah, correct. The value is 19.5. 19.5? Let me check. Yes. Okay, 10 plus 29 divided by 2. Oh, okay, 19.5. So... Do we get the oh sorry not this class i have to you have you cannot use this class we cannot use the zero frequency I, you have to start the the one that is correct the first one that is given because this one is zero frequency okay so i also made mistake over here we have to use 30 plus 49 and divide by 2. so if you check 30 plus 49 after that you divide by 2 the answer will be 39.5 so this is correct already okay Thank you for correcting. Uh. Who is that? Just now? Ayman. Oh, thank you, Ayman. So, do you have any question for this one? We have to start no. from the first class. Even now? Uh? Okay, no. Uh, not the one that we have added in. Okay, so regarding the explanation for the interquartile range. So, the interquartile range is 40. 40 means the difference between the highest electricity bill and the lowest electricity bill that lies in the middle of 50% of the distribution is 40 ringgit. Hope you understand this one. Because the first quarter and the third quarter, this part is actually the 50% of the ogive. The rest over here is 25%, 25%. That's why we have the first, second, third quarter. You can see it's all divided into four parts. So the middle here 50 percent the 40 means the difference between the highest electricity bill over here and the lowest electricity electricity bill it lies in the middle of the distribution over here which is equal to 40 ringgit okay so this one you have to practice like, on how to explain it okay any question for this one no no huh? so i continue uh, with the madam. second question. yes yes uh, i have a question madam okay uh for the position of the Q1 okay. and the Q3, right? right. I, I use times 50. Uh, so my so my answer for Q1 and Q3 is different. But my interquartile range is the same. 
Okay. Is it correct, it, madam. It's not correct. It's not acceptable because okay. from your first quarter and third quarter, your cumulative frequency is already not correct. You have to use the total correct cumulative frequency 52 you cannot change with 50 yeah although you can get the correct interquartile range but from the beginning you already got it wrong so no marks will be given now huh? okay all right okay so you need Thank to you, make changes on that huh? welcome okay now we look at question number two here so this one is about the time and the frequency given they ask you to find out the variance and standard deviation so from here you make up the table this is the table. You have to add on x, x squared, fx, fx squared. Remember this form. When you were asked to find out the variance or in standard deviation, you have to add x, x squared, fx, fx squared. So the frequency over here is given already. You find the total frequency. And then the x is referring to the midpoint. So 1 plus 2 divided by 2, you get 1.5. And the rest, huh, you just follow. So fx, you multiply, you get the value here, find the total fx. The x squared is the midpoint squared. So you squared everything. The fx squared is the midpoint multiplied by the frequency. And then, oh, sorry, this one multiplied by the uh, squared of the midpoint. So you get this. So from the value that we have, first you find mean. Mean is total fx over f. So 1070 divided by 152, you get this. Okay, this is the answer. And then variance. So you just need to follow the formula. Variance is total fx squared, which is 8,976, divided by the total frequency 152 minus the mean. So minus the mean, we don't get 7.04. We get this one huh? because the value is more accurate. So after minus, you get 9.5 for the variance. And then standard deviation is the square root of it. So I square root everything in the calculation over here. We will get 3.08. Do you have any other answer from this? All right. Madam, yeah. I have to put the minute card behind 3.08. Ah, uh, no, lah, because this one is a bit confusing for you. Okay. Like the answer uh, before, the one that you learned, you learned it in liter, right? So actually, all of this, I think you don't have to put the unit at all because it's confusing. Like the variance, it will be minute squared. So no need, uh -huh. no need to put. Okay. If, if, yeah, if you put it down, also nothing wrong. But you got to make sure you put the correct unit. Uh. Okay, uh, so I continue with B. Uh, madam. Yes. Uh, for mean kan madam kita perlu yeah. memang perlu cari mean ke madam memang perlu itu asasnya sebab dalam variance dia punya mm -hmm. mean dalam ada dalam uh, formula so you have to find out first okay madam okay that is the first step huh? so now we look at b okay so you're given the distance and the frequency table right now so this one is in black okay you add in the x x squared fx fx squared so find out all the value find out the total of frequency fx and also fx squared so first find the mean 5080 divided by 100 so exactly 50.8 so variance will be the formula you add in to add four seven five five over the total frequency you minus the mean now i can use 50.8 because the value is exactly 50.8 there's no other decimal so i can use this so find out 266.91 is the value of the variance. Okay, standard deviation. So you just need to square root it. Square root the whole thing over here. You will get 16.34. Do you have any question for this one? No. No? Huh? Anyone try without using the table? You use calculator to find out the answer? None is Me. it? Who? Hazlin Mendel. Has been very good. Actually, it's good if you use the calculator. You know why? Besides using this, you can use your calculator to check your answer in the exam later on. You can see whether oh you get the fx squared correct or not. This one correct or not. This one correct or not. Because sometimes you will make mistake when you do the calculation in the middle here when you are going to put the data inside. So the calculator is for the purpose of at least checking your answer is correct. Okay. So do you have any problem in using the calculator to get the value of variance and standard deviation? Yes, madam. Do you, you still have problem, is it? 
Yes, lupa step yes. dia madam. Oh, do you yes. want to practice together now? Uh, if ha uh, ada masa madam. Okay, if have time ah, so later on ah, like if we have time because it's already eleven fifty six, so I can practice together with you later on ah. Now we look at the second part of the measure of dispersion. So we have to look at the first part, uh, which is to determine the range, this one, variance and standard deviation. Today we are going to look at how to construct and interpret box plot, simple one. Okay, now we look at the question. You have learned box plot before, uh, so now also you need to know the shape and distribution of the box plot. Okay, so today you are going to look at these three types of box plot. Uh, the first one, the first one is just balance. Okay, you can see the first quartile, the second quartile, the third quartile. So we call it symmetric distribution, whereby this part, we call it whisker. Both the whisker is having the same length, and then both the box over here, the, they are symmetry. So it's symmetric distribution. Okay, for the left skewed distribution, you can see the whisker on the left is longer than the one on the right. So we call it left skewed. Okay, and then the one that is right skewed, the, the right whisker is longer than the left whisker. Okay, now we look at the uh, important point over here. A, the median lies in the middle of the box and the whiskers are about the same length on both sides of the box. The box. So this is the median, huh? you all know about it already. The second one, the median cuts the box into two different sizes. This one cut into two same sizes, this one different sizes different sizes. If the left side of the box is longer, then the distribution is left skewed. So you can see the box over here, the left side is also longer. Not only depend on the whisker, you can also look at the size of the box. If it is longer, it is left skewed. On the right hand side, if the box is longer, then it is right skewed. Okay, left whisker and right whisker represent the score outside of the median. So this one represents the score outside the median. You need to remember this point, huh? outside the median. If the box is divided into the same size, but the left whisker is longer than the right whisker, then the left, the data distribution is left skewed and vice versa. This is like what we learned just now, like what I told you, if the whisker is longer, it is left. If the right one is longer, then it is right skewed. Okay, huh? now we look at the example given. 11 here. So the ogive on the right shows the mazes in gram of 90 star fruits. These are the star fruits. And you are asked to construct a box plot based on the ogive and then step the distribution shape of the data. So now to construct a box plot, you need five important things. Okay. The first thing, you need the maximum value. Second, you need the minimum value. The third one, you need the first quartile. The fourth, you need the median. And then the last, you need the third quartile. Hopefully, you still remember last year you learned about this. We need all of this to make a box plot. Okay, median is also referring to second quartile. Eh? Hopefully, you still remember. Eh? So we are going to find each of the value from here, the five points to build the box plot. First, let us look at the maximum value. What is the maximum value from the graph? Can you see? 90. 90. Ah, very good. Is it? Oh, sorry, huh? you look at the graph carefully. 90, maximum value. Correct or not? 90. Actually, you don't look at the cumulative frequency. Huh? We are going to look at this part over here, the one that is representing the mass. So the maximum value is actually the last point here from the cumulative frequency, but then you refer to the x-axis. It's actually 150. Okay, that is the maximum value. So maximum value is 150. Now you can find the minimum value, right? What is the minimum value? 80. Yes, very good. You got that already. Minimum value equal to 80. So now we are going to find the first quartile. So before you find the first quartile, you need to identify the position first. Position of first quartile, okay, how to get the first quartile? It is 1 over 4 multiplied by the total frequency, 90. So 1 over 4 times 90, how much you get? When you press your calculator, you will get 22.5. 
by referring to the graph, huh, you can see from the graph, 22.5 is somewhere here, okay? Because each of these is representing 20 to 30. This representing two, right? Two, four. So 22.5 is a quarter from the second box, okay? So down here, you can see the first quarter is represented by the number 116. Can you see that, class? Make it bigger for you. Can you see yeah. that? Yes, huh? yes. Okay, now we are going to look for the second quarter or the median. So it's actually 2 over 4 or you can use 1 over 2. Lah. It's the same. 1 over 2 times 90. So the answer is 45. Meaning the second quarter is equal to, so you refer to 45, it's exactly half in between 40 and 50 here. So you move to the right. You can see down here, the answer is 123. Okay. Now we are going to look for the third quarter. That is 3 over 4 times 90. So you will get 67.5. So the third quartile, you refer to 67.5. This is 60, 66, 68. So 67.5 is around here. You move it down. So you are going to get the value of 1, 2, 8. Okay. From all the value given, now you have 5 of the value over here. This 5, huh? 1, 2, uh, three, four, five. Then you can draw your box plot already. So, box plot. We need a graph, huh? Some of you say you don't have your graph. You out of your graph. So you can get from the internet. Actually, you can just print out your graph. Okay. So this is my graph over here. I make it bigger for you to see. So to draw that, you are just going to use the middle line over here. Make sure you can insert all the value of the mass given. You can see. It range from 80 until 150. So we are going to use the same range from here. Okay, from 80 until 150. I try to make it fast huh? because this one, my ruler here, it really takes time. Um, green, blue, red, okay, red. Okay, next one. So we are going to draw the line with an arrow at the back, not a number line. Huh? The last one is 150. I'm just going to label it 150. This is 140. Until we get 80. So this is 120, 110, 190, 80. So enough already lah. Okay, after that, you are going to start with the maximum value is 150. So you just need to plot 150 on the line. After that, 80. This one done? So 80 here. Followed by, uh, I think I better use black uh, huh? because you always use black to plot the point. So uh, plot the point using black color. After that, we need 116. So you look for 116. Where is 116? Somewhere this is 110. 116 is somewhere here. This one. After that, we have 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3. So you move your cursor. You can see 120, 121, 123 here. Okay, followed by 1, 2, 8. So 1, 2, 8 is somewhere here. Okay, so after it is done, what you need to do is you just need to join these two sides. The whisker using a straight line. So I'm going to join it using the straight line. Okay, I'm going to use back the purple color here. Done. Then inside here is the box. So it's up to you how many box you want to construct. For example, I'm going to use three up, three down. Okay, so I construct my plot here. Three up, three down. One, two, three, sorry. One, two, three. Okay, and then you draw the straight line. I'm just going to draw back using bare hand, lah, huh? But you actually, you got to draw using ruler. Okay, so lastly, you can just 
redraw again the back dot to make it clearer. Okay, so our box plot is done. Now we look at the second question, what is needed again? Hence, state the distribution shape of the data. So by referring to what we learned earlier, hope you still remember the symmetry distribution, the left skewed distribution and right skewed distribution. This box plot over here, it looks like which kind of distribution out of these three? Left skewed. Uh, so you can see the left whisker is longer, right? And the box also here, the left side is longer. So it is a left skewed distribution. Okay, because the box plot over here, the, the whisker, you can say the whisker is longer, but then the answer given in the book, what does it say? They said the left side of the box is longer than the right side. Up to you lah. You want to say whisker is longer on the left compared to the right, also can. So that's all for this uh, box plot today. Do you have any question? No. No question, no. right? Okay, so no, after no. this, I want you to do 7.2b. Both the question in 7.2b. Clear? Now we go back. We have time already now. We can go back to do the calculation to get the mean, the standard deviation and variance. So you take out your calculator. Are you ready with the calculator? Yes. Okay, I take out mine also. Okay, get ready, yeah? So based on this table over here, let me see which one is easier for you to do it right now. I use this one because the number is smaller, easier for you to key in data. Okay, so hopefully you still remember how to key in the frequency data. First, you need to press mod. After that, I clear everything first. Huh? Okay, mod. After that, when you press three, sorry. Hold on, huh? because mine got a memory over there. Chief clear. Clear everything first, huh? Okay, everything is clear. So press mod. You can look at three representing the statistic. So when you press three, you will get this. Choose the first one, one minus bar. So you can see the one with the value of the x given. After that, because we need to key in the frequency, yeah. So you need to press shift. Shift, mod, then you need to move the arrow down. Choose for stat number four. So I choose number four. And then you on it, that is number one. So we have two columns right now. Everybody have this? Yes. Yes. Huh? Okay, so for the yes. answer now, you key in the midpoint that is. 1.5 and so on and then for the frequency you key in the frequency right now here okay so i'm going to key in 1.5 and enter once you enter you can see the number huh? after that i'm going to key in the frequency frequency is 15 you might be faster than me you are holding your physical calculator with you six one two three four five six. Oh, i miss up one after you have done key in you can check again make sure your all the data that you key in is correct. Have you done this? Yes. Yes. yes okay, so now you can press AC. We are going to do some other function. Okay, because the data is already in the memory. Yeah? Now, most of the function that we are going to use is using shift one. Shift one, everybody press shift one. We are going to use shift one, either number three or number four only. You can see number three and number four here. Number three is referring to the sum. Okay, so you can see this is total x squared. This is total x. This one is referring to the total of uh, fx actually. 
So it's referring to 1070. Okay, let us press 2 right now. And then you press equal, you will get 1070. Okay, now you press shift 1 again. So the first one is already correct. Huh? The first one, 1070 one, already correct. Now we are going to look at the fx. So that one, sorry, the f, huh? total frequency, to check whether the number correct or not. So what you do is you press shift. One. Now it's in this form, the var here. Okay, the n is referring to the total frequency. So you press one to check, enter. So 152, our 152 is also correct. Okay, next thing, we are going to check on the min. So to check the value of the mean, you press shift. It's still the same. Huh? Everything is shift one. The mean is in three or four, if you still remember. Oh. Four. Correct. So you can see the mean here. So you just need to press two. And you get 7.039. So 7.04. So the answer is correct. Okay, so everything is about shift one, shift one, uh, shift one. So now, go back here. We are going to check on the, um, because we cannot have the variance, huh? you are going to check on the standard deviation. So, shift, one. To check on the standard deviation, you will need, which one? Uh, check on the sum first. Uh. Here, we haven't checked the sum yet. EX squared, this one. This one is referring to this uh, at 976. So, let's check whether it's correct. Yes, it is correct, this one. So the mean is already correct. We just, this one also correct. We just need to check on the standard deviations value right now. So that is to press shift. One. This part, uh, four. Okay, which one is standard deviation? Three. Three, correct. Because this symbol over here represents standard deviation. You can see our okay, the standard deviation the symbol huh? standard deviation if the variance it will be standard deviation squared so we press three then you can get equal you are going to get 3.0 at exactly the same so it's correct already to check the variance do you still remember how to check on the variance because standard deviation to get it you square root the variance right so from here if you want to get the variance you just need to square it so you press the X squared button and you press equal sign, you will get 9.50. So you see, round it off, 9.49, round it off to two decimal places, 9.50. That's how we get all of this correct, meaning that your table over here, all the data are correct. Let's look at 7.2b here. Okay, the object from the right shows the number of units of electrical power consumed by 80 households in a particular month. So you can refer to the frequency here, it's 80. Okay, A, they ask you to construct a box plot based on the object. So to construct a box plot, we need to find the maximum value, minimum value, the first, second, and the third quarter. So maximum value, we get it from here, okay, the end of the frequency, the line. Huh? Okay, the ogive over here, it indicate the maximum value. The first point here indicate the maximum minimum value. So it is 450 and 50. So to get the first quarter, we need to find the position first. Okay, some of you still mix up. Huh? You write down Q1 is equal to 20, equal to 170. That is not correct. Huh? Make sure you write down that is the position. After that, you only find the first quartal. So position will be the cumulative frequency divided by 4. We get 20. Then you refer to your graph over here. 20, you move it down. Uh, one more thing. When you draw your ogive, uh, to get the reading from your ogive, a lot of you didn't do this. To get the reading down here, you must show the error. Okay, If possible, you label all the value down here. Okay, that is what is required in the exam later on. Uh. And then for the second quartile, okay, so it is 80 divided by 2, we get the median. Uh, so it will be 40. So again, you refer to the graph to get the value of the 40 for the second quartile. The reading is from here. Okay, if you don't know how to get the reading like mine over here, it is in between, half, half. 
So what you can do is you use 250 minus 200, you divide by 5. After that, you multiply by 2.5. So you can get the value actually here is actually exactly in the middle. So it's 225. Okay, and then for the first quartile, so it will be 80 divided by 4. You multiply by 3. So you are going to get uh, 70, 60. 60 here, you move it down. So you are going to get your third quartile. The reading is 280. Okay, after you get all the reading there, then you can construct your box plot already. Okay, from what we have earlier, the reading for maximum value for 50, 50 the minimum value, first quartile is 170, and then 225 for the median, and the last one is 280. So you just need to draw a line over here, and your, blocks, your box in the middle. Okay, this is the median. Now we move to the second question. Hence, set the distribution shape of the data. So based on your box plot over here, you just need to observe how does the distribution shape look like. So compare the whisker. The whisker on the right is longer, right? So meaning that the distribution shape over here, it is skewed to the right. Then you compare the box plot. The box plot, it looks like... Uh, symmetry on the left and on the right. So we cannot mention everything that is due to the right over here. We just can depend on the whisker to mention that it is slightly skewed to the right. Okay, do you have any question for this one? No. No, huh? Okay, we proceed to the second question. Second question here. The ogive on the right shows the duration in second of 60 songs. So we have 60 songs all together. So you can look at this part here, 60. Add by radio station at a certain time. A, construct a box plot based on the archive. Okay, and then set the distribution shape of the data. So same thing, uh, we look for the maximum value. So at the end of the archive here, indicate the maximum value. The beginning is the minimum value. So to get the position, the total, the cumulative frequency divided by four, we get 15. 15 will be the position of the first quarter. So if this is 20, this is 10, 15 is in the middle. Okay, refer to it, dot down, okay, draw your dash line here, use the arrow. So the answer for the first quarter is 269.5. And then second quarter, after you get the position, you find the value is 317. And then the third quarter, you get the position, find out the value is 300 50.5. Now, you can, 59.5, uh, sorry. Uh, now you are going to draw your box plot using all the five value given. So maximum value, minimum value, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile. Okay, then you just draw nicely. Okay, so regarding the distribution shape, so you compare the whisker, after you compare the whisker, then you compare the box. The box also look like symmetry, right? So the uh, whisker is a bit longer from the right. Therefore, so what you can say is the distribution shape data is slightly skewed to the left. Okay, if it is longer on the left for the box over here, then we don't use the word slightly. We just need to mention the distribution shape of the data is skewed to the left. Okay, any question? No. No question, huh? Uh, I want to mention something on the exercise before this one. That is 7.2, 7.1a. That is the first question where we enter this chapter. Okay, you look at the question given. Huh? This is the first question. Huh? The data below shows the time taken by 50 pupils to go to school from their houses. The time recorded is in the nearest minute. So we have 50 students right here. Construct a frequency table such that there are five classes. Then set the lower limit, upper limit, midpoint, lower boundary and upper boundary of each class interval. So first thing, we need to find the class interval. So to find the class interval, you just need to look for the biggest and the smallest value. 
after that, you divide by five classes. So after we divide by five classes, the answer will be nine point something. Therefore, in each of the class, we have to round it off to 10 in a class. So in your answer, mostly of your answer, you show this, whereby um, the class is from zero to nine. After that, 10 to 19, then 11, I'm sorry, 20 to 29, and so on up to 49. So the lower limit over here, you will get a nine, and then the upper limit, do you still remember what I mentioned over here? I write down now so that you can see. Uh. Okay, zero to nine. After that, you will have um, 10 to 19. And then this one is 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49. Okay. So let's see, did I copy the correct one over here? Uh, zero, nine. Wait, uh, let me see, did I copy the correct one? The midpoint is also different. Okay, never mind. What I want to mention over here is some of the classes that we did might be not the same as the one that is given. This one is given in the answer. But then I noticed from your friend walking, uh, this one is from Inran. Uh, he put down the classes start from number one, whereby ours is start from zero. So next time, if you found out you don't know which one to determine the correct one, either start from zero or start from 10. And then the last one is 40 to 49, but his uh, class interval is 41 to 50. So what do you think? Which one is correct? The first class interval over here or the second one that is done by Imran? Do you have any idea? Can you see or not? What do you think, class? The first one? The first one is definitely correct. Ah, I copied the wrong one. No wonder. Hold on, ah. I'm going to open the answer for you. Uh, not this one, sorry. Not this one. But also can see, right? Ah, okay, also can see. This is a BM version. So let me let, let drag it down for you to see. Uh, this is the one. Okay, so this is the class and the frequency I copy this uh, and then we can go and compare over there okay the first one is definitely correct 0 to 9 10 to 19 20 to 29 and so on so with the frequency that is given so when you compare these two there are a lot of different right because based on your class from 0 to 9 your frequency will be different based on your daily when you calculate from the top so this one is 1 to 10 the frequency is 9 and so on okay both are correct i'll let you know you just have to remember when you have this kind of situation happen, you just need to make sure the lowest value, the one, is in the correct class interval over here. And then the last one is also in the class interval. So as long as all your class interval is correct and the first and the last value fall on the same class, then consider your frequency table over here are both correct. Okay, not class? Okay. Can you repeat again, Mandel? I repeat again. Eh? If you look at the original answer over here, based on the class interval from 0 to 9, because we to get the class interval, we use 49 minus 1 and then we divide by 5, right? So we will have 9 point something, I think 9.6 something. So we need to make a class a 10. Therefore, some of you don't know how to start with the class interval because we have 1, we don't have 0 at all, right? But 
to think carefully because you have 49 also you are going to use 40 to 49 at the back 30 to 39 20 to 29 10 to 19 and 0 to 9 so you get a complete frequent uh, class interval over here from 0 to 49 but if you don't know how some of you might start with number one so like this it is one to ten also 10 data in one class like this one zero to nine also 10 data in one class right so my question just now which one is correct so both are correct as long as your first data number one is in the class interval so this is the number one okay and your last data 49 is in the class interval so you can see 49 is before 50. so when both of the data is in the correct class interval and your class interval is correct one to ten 11 to 20, 21 to 30, provided all your class interval is correct, then consider your frequency table is also correct. Because when you do like this, uh, all your frequency, you can see your lower limit is different. Your upper limit is different. Everything is different, including your midpoint is also different. Your upper boundary also different when you compare. Your upper boundary also different. Can you see that? Totally, the whole table is different. So you just bear in mind, these two need to be in the correct class, provided all your class interval is correct. Consider your answer is correct. Okay? But one thing, uh, in the SPM later on, you don't have to worry because usually the class, the first class interval will be given first in the table for you. So you just need to continue with the rest. Okay? Okay. Okay, so we've moved on now. Make sure you hand in this work in the GC later on because I already uh, create one topic for that. So let's look at how to compare and interpret two or more sets of group data based on measures of dispersion. Okay, so our learning standard today here are compare and interpret two or more sets of group data based on measures of dispersion hence my conclusion so the important part of the measure of dispersion that we need to use is the mean and also the standard deviation you just remember that uh, when we want to compare we are going to use the mean and also the standard deviation okay look at example 12 here a botanist saw 40 examples samples of hibiscus seeds using two different hybrids that is hybrid A and hybrid B. The diameters of both hybrids are measured under close guard to develop an extra large hibiscus. The following frequency table shows the diameter of petals for hybrid A and hybrid B. So we need to look at the diameters of the petal and how is their uh, consistency of the petals later on. So this is the table showing the diameter with different hybrid, hybrid A and hybrid B. Okay, based on the mean and standard deviation, determine which hybrid produces larger and more consistent petals. So we want to see which one having the larger petal and which one is more consistent. Okay, justify your answer. So first thing over here, to find out their, uh, which one is larger and consistent, you need to determine the mean and standard deviation. So to get the mean, we will need to complete the first set of frequency table based on the diameter and also the hybrid A over here, this part. Okay, so I move on to the frequency table to make it fast for you all. So this is what I have over here. So I copy down all the diameter already. Yeah? So we just need to copy the frequency. Okay, let's move back on what is the frequency. 4, 8, 9, 10, 9. Okay, so I move back here. 4, 8, 9, 10, 9. Okay, so we can get the total already. Yeah? Directly, the total frequency is this 40 over here. Okay, what about the midpoint? How do we get the midpoint? Do you still remember? Do you remember or not? How to get the midpoint? No one remember. The class. Um, some. Uh -uh. Some the class and divide Upper by limit. two. 
overload uh, upper limit plus lower limit okay correct upper limit plus the lower limit of the class and you divide over two. yes correct okay i still have to show you one uh, because i noticed some of you might know how to do it okay so i still show it to you uh, so it is 13 plus 13.4 after that you divide by 2 so we are going to get 13.2 so i fill it in here 13.2 okay and the rest this one you don't see first huh? this one i already put the formula over here so this one will be 13.7 what is the next one here 14 plus 14.4 divided by 2 will be 14 point two. Two. 2. Correct. So continue 14 point. So you can, seven. See, you can see 2, 7, 2, 7. You just follow. Lah. So this one will be 15.2. Okay. So the Fx over here is 13.2 times 4. You get Fx. You just remember when you want to construct this frequency table to get the mean and also the standard deviation, lah, the variance. You just have to construct x, x squared, f, fx, uh, sorry, fx, fx squared. Four of this. Okay, I repeat. Uh, x, f, x squared, fx, fx squared. Because this one is already provided. Okay, so the x squared is from the x over here. 13.2, you times 13.2. Again, you get 174.24. And then the fx squared over here is from the multiplication of the frequency with the x squared. So 4 times 174.24, we get this. After that, total up the fx squared, total up the fx, total up the f. Okay, so I'm going to move this to our uh, question there. Okay, this is what we have. This is for the first hybrid. Huh? So in this first hybrid, we are going to calculate the mean and also the standard deviation okay so this one is the total frequency i write down first this is the total f and then this one is the total fx this one is the total fx squared okay still remember how to get the mean mean is equal to mean uh, we just write down mean with the symbol of it so the mean is Total fx divided by total f. This one. I write down. Huh? Total fx divided by total f. Equal to 574 divided by 40. So you can calculate already. 574 divided by 40 is equal to 14.35. I write down here straight. Okay. Then we can get our standard deviation already. What is the formula to get the standard deviation? Do you still remember the formula? Formula Sigma will be given. Again? Sigma standard deviation. Uh -huh. Oh, square root. Ah, very good. We have to start with the square root. Square root of sigma f x squared over sigma f after that minus the mean squared okay so sigma fx we have it already it is 8253.5 over the sigma f the total of frequency yeah, minus the mean so just now we get the mean with the exact value so we can use 14.35 if the decimal is more than that, then we cannot use 14.35. We have to move to use this back. Okay, so I'll square it. Uh, one more thing, I need to show using your calculator now because I noticed when I check your work, some of you don't know how to get the answer, although this part you got it right, but your answer, always you got it wrong, meaning you have problem with the calculation. So those who have problem, uh, you take out a calculator. I'm going to show you how to use, how to press the calculator. Give you five seconds. Hopefully, you are ready. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's start. Okay, first you are going to press, going to press at two five three point five. So move to your calculator at 
0.253.5. Over 40 means you divide by 40. Divide by 40. Get the answer. So press equal first. After that, minus 14.35 squared. So minus 14.35 squared. Get the answer. After you get the answer, square root the whole thing. So you just need to press the square root answer. Then you can get it is equal to 0 0.644. So we run it off to two decimal places. It is 0 0.644. 64 centimeter that is the standard deviation okay and then the first one the mean is 14.35 centimeter up to you whether you want to write the unit or not huh? because i think the unit is not uh, important right now for this they just want you to find the mean and also the value of the standard deviation okay so first hybrid we have done already this is hybrid a huh? uh, i label first hybrid a now we are going to move to hybrid b Okay, so hybrid B, I'm going to copy the frequency as usual. 9, 10, 8, 6, 7. So I move it here. This one will be different now. 9, 10, 8, 6, 7. Okay, so the frequency is still the same. The total frequency is still 40. Midpoint, let's check. Yes, it is still the same because we didn't change the class. But then the fx will be different because based on the frequency. So 9 times 13.2, we get this. And then x squared, still the same. fx squared will be different because frequency multiplied by the x squared. So we get this. So you can see the value over here is different. Okay, now I copy this to our table here. Uh, I do it on the right here. Okay, so this is hybrid B. Hybrid B. Okay, label everything. The first one over here, this one is the total frequency. So sigma F. And then next one is total Fx. Last one is total fx squared. Okay, so we are going to find our mean. That's the first thing. Mean is equal to total fx over total f. Total fx is 564 over 40. So press your calculator to see whether we can get exact value or not. If cannot, later on, we need to use 564 over 40 in the calculation for the standard deviation so 14.1 is an exact value so you can use it okay next we are going to find our standard deviation standard deviation so this chapter is actually easy because you just need to use the formula that is given and then you just need to follow so it's one of the questions that you can score mark i think it consists of 15 or 12 mark 12 marks for this question. So standard deviation is square root of total fx squared. This one it will be given now, will be provided minus means. So continue. Total fx squared is 7972 over total f 40. The mean we can use this. Again, I repeat, if it is not exact value, you must use this because I noticed the previous question the value is not exact it's more than three decimal but some of you you still use the same value over here that will cause you get the wrong answer although you get the correct answer but then your working is not correct already okay so minus 14.1 squared squared okay again those who have problem to press calculator take out your calculator first we are going to start with 7972 huh? So 7972 divided by 40. You get the answer first. After that, minus 14.1 squared. Get the answer. Then square root your answer. So the answer is equal to 0 0.7. Okay. Now 
we need to compare and we need to determine which one have a larger larger petal and also more consistent petal i'm not sure whether you can see these two together or not okay never mind you look at the mean the first one for hybrid a is 14.35 i just want you to bear in mind huh? for mean the higher the value the better for standard deviation the lower the value of the standard deviation means it is more consistent okay so over here we compare the mean of these two 14.35 and also 14.1 the higher the better right which one is having a higher mean hybrid a ah hybrid a is having the higher mean meaning that it produces a larger petals over here okay and then for the standard deviation we are going to see which one produce less or lower standard deviation this one is six zero point six four right this one is zero point seven so which one is lower a. hybrid a and this one is lower means the hybrid a this one uh, the standard deviation shows a lower number over here it means that the petals is more consistent so this one is referring to how consistent is the production of the petal and then this one is referring on which one the how big is the petal the the size of the petal the big the higher the mean the bigger the petal okay any question class no no, no. okay my question for you the mean higher or lower is better higher what about the standard deviation higher or lower is better lower, lower. yes very good so you bear in mind huh? 